All righty, Eric. All right. Looks like we're live. Okay, cool. I just wanted to pull it up on my phone. Well, actually, I will just have to do that on my computer. And I'll have the chat up so I can also put this out on TikTok. Indeed. That's what we're kind of doing right now. All right. So I have all my stuff set up. You good? Yeah, we're good. We're ready right. to rock. Yeah. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Um, we have my esteemed colleague and homeboy, Eric Forner, here in the group. Thanks for coming on, Eric. I'm super excited. Oh, no problem. You know it. I'm glad to be here. It's, it's actually a pleasure to be here. And I've been excited uh, since we talked about it from the beginning. So yeah. Uh, super, super excited. Yeah, same. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Eric is, in addition to being uh, someone I would consider a friend and colleague in affiliate marketing, he's also um, just launched his own coaching program and has really kind of had this, I don't know, exponential rise to awesomeness uh, within affiliate marketing. And so um, really excited that you're here so we can kind of benefit from your knowledge and experience. And yeah, if anybody has questions as we go, just type them into the live chat or the comments. And if you are here live, go ahead and drop a hashtag live just to say hi or say hello. Thanks, Christy and Barbara. Nice name. All right. So um, I have a ton of questions for you, and I'm sure that everybody that's watching is going to have questions as well. Um, so start off by just telling us kind of what your story is, like what's your deal, you know, um, a little bit about your background and how you came across affiliate marketing. All right, perfect. So, um, you know, you don't have to get out your pens and paper yet, you know, um, you just basically just open your ears for this one. But my story basically begins in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm 41 years old. Um, I work construction my entire life. I've had my fair share of uh, alcohol and drug uh, abuse. And I have had my fair share of like doing time for alcoholism. With that being said, um, my jobs consisted of, you know, construction. And that's all I knew. Uh, this last time I got out was about two years ago, I decided to make a change. And that change consisted of scrolling on Facebook, believe it or not, one day and coming across a, a post from Legendary Marketer. And at this time, I was already dabbling in different side hustles like Cutco and uh, you know Kirby, just different side hustles I was actually doing, making money with, but I was struggling. I was putting in way more than I should have. Anyways, I've started to give up. I was in the valley of despair. You guys been there, right? Where you kind of just give up and you don't know if this is for you kind of thing. Well, scrolling on Facebook, you know, feeling sorry for myself, you know, as we do sometimes after work and, you know, with this pitiful life that we live sometimes, uh, with the nine to five, either way, I was in that despair and uh, I came across an ad on uh, legendary or about legendary marketer. It wasn't a Dave Sharp. Uh, you know, it was, I can't, you know, honestly, I don't remember who it was because I th think I got left hanging. I think kind of thing. Right. So I kind of just journeyed on my own um, through this journey. I uh, met up with, you know, legendary marketer went through the, the, the 15 days uh, for $7 and all that stuff. And you heard the hype. Um, it is a good program and a good platform to utilize the tools. And, and, and I noticed that a lot of people were having a success with the blueprints. And at this time I was talking with Barb's and I, uh, you know, mentor now um, with CF, uh, CBF, uh, create a brand framework. And I was working with Brad, you know, during this whole time of like starting up kind of, you know, talking with him and not really paying him yet, but just talking with him. He was kind of coaching me along. Um, I came to the, uh, the, the fork in the road when it was like buy the blueprints or kind of get Brad's mentorship. Um, well, mentorship was a little bit more expensive. Um, and the blueprints, you know, they had a lot of value, but I was working with somebody one on one and I connected with. So needless to say, I decided to go with Brad and, and uh, his mentorship. And it was the best play decision of my life. I catapulted my life so fast within 30 days or so. I had 68,000 followers or something like that um, in 30 days, somewhere around there. Um, and, you know, yes, it went through a viral video, but that viral video had three components. It had a good hook, 
a good body and a good call to action. And so with my call to action and me telling a hero's journey inside of that one TikTok video that literally changed my life, it got a whole bunch of people that were like-minded, not sure if they were interested in the you know side hustle thing, but still had these roadblocks in front of them that they hated to live with. And I was able through that one video trigger a lot of these roadblocks. And from that trigger, I caught this wave of understanding how to connect with people through my avatar. And for those of, the, for those of you guys don't know what an avatar is, it's something that you would speak, like if you were speaking to yourself inside of your head and these roadblocks that you encounter every time you sit up to put on your work boots or every time you kiss your wife goodbye and you know you're going on another 20, 20 30 day hitch out of town, whatever it is, those feelings, I was able to connect with those. And I found my avatar, the blue collared worker, um, people that, you know, struggled from their nine to five, it could have been nurses. I grew to and evolved through the 15 day training, working with Barb in the CF, uh, CBF frameworks, uh, career brand framework, mentorship program, to the point to where now my life is catapulted um, legitimately within four months, making five figures, I haven't missed a beat on uh, more, you know, less than $10,000 a month basically right out the gate um, within a few months after, you know, I started with Brad. And so with that being said, um, now I'm a coach and a mentor. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that take place through this journey. And so, you know, with my, with my experiences and my trials and tribulations, I'm able to benefit the next person. And they realize that, internalize it, and they resonate with me. I love that so much. Um, is that viral video that you're talking about the like the, I don't know what I'm going to do next, like yeah. the universe talking to you. So it's for like those of you, yeah. yeah, there was a, a trend a little bit ago and I'll, I'll find the video and post it in the group for everyone's reference. But I think it got like a million and a half views or something like that. Right. I think it might be at 2 million. Oh, wow. Uh, it might be a million. I don't know. It might be two or one. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So basically, but it's, it's very specific like you were saying to your avatar which is like that blue collar worker that construction guy you know who maybe is intimidated by learning digital marketing skills because they've worked construction their whole lives and um so but like you said it had a great hook it told that that story about who you were and what your hero's journey was about um and then i remember because i've used this video in examples before in training, um, that the call to action wasn't, Hey, click the link in my bio, buy this thing. It was follow along on my journey. This is your sign to follow along. Cause this was meant for you. Like it literally gives me goosebumps. Cause that's so right powerful. Now. I got them right yeah. now, mm -hmm. but uh, I think yeah. that's, yeah, that's like such a powerful and I think authentic message that you got across. And I think mm -hmm. that is what kind of probably kickstarted you being able to build that incredibly engaged following on TikTok, which kind of takes me to my next question for you. So I like, I despise, not despise, that's a really strong word, but there, I, I feel that viral traffic on TikTok can be overrated. Yes. Um, a lot of times it attracts the wrong audience. It attracts people who are looky lose or um, who are attracted to some flash or, you know what I mean? And not necessarily like the nitty gritty reality of what you're offering. Um, but the difference between that kind of viral traffic and the kind of traffic that you generate and the following that you've built, which is highly, highly engaged people who really feel connected to you that are DMing you, that are joining your Facebook group, that want to take this journey with you. Um, <clears throat> Can, for the people who are watching this, can you kind of break down or how would you put that into words? How would you articulate how you were able to specifically build that following versus, you know, a bunch of randos who just hit the follow button because they thought one of your videos was clever or funny or something? Absolutely. So first and foremost, um, a little gold nugget with pretty much every one of my uh, mentees in my mastermind and others, I... I put in the ear, in their ear, you utilize that one video. And with that one video has gained success on like 
at least 80% of the people I've asked to use that video or I've recommended to use that video as a template, utilize it for their specific niche, right? Or not niche, their specific job or career. Like it could be nursing. You could be literally in a nursing uniform or whatever. It would fit that criteria. And so they all have had success within overnight have had over a thousand followers or you know, more. Right. And so, um, I would definitely use that video, uh, or something similar, um, just to get yourself traction first thing, and that's going to help you get the right attraction, uh, and traffic. The second thing is do not do follow trains, uh, trains. I understand that TikTok is like, if you're in a coal mine and you're amongst a bunch of coals and you're basically trying to pick out the diamonds from the rough, Right. And so that's what TikTok is basically when you're utilizing that platform for a low end offer in the front end, right, for low hanging fruit. So you can look at this two ways. If you have a call to action and the body of your 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 message in your TikTok or wherever it's at has a storyline behind it or a direction for a person to think in a certain way, and then that call to action is going to get them to react in a certain way, then you can make a trending viral video because it's attracting that type of person's mindset. Now, not all of them might not be action takers and might be just looky loose, but still you got a bunch of these per people, with some kind of mindset in there that threw your content along the way because a person needs seven hours of exposure, right? So if we can just get those, um, I guess called cold traffic leads in super cold with just a little inkling, we can warm them up to being believers and then straight out fans. 100%. And so you can utilize your messaging, but don't take the viral thing lightly because you will ruin your TikTok. You can ruin your name. And if you start out just automatically promoting a product without building an established, like, uh, you know, uh, image of yourself, you know, uh, just a stand, you know, that's the biggest thing. So I, I would definitely stick with um, if you go viral and you try to do a viral trend, make sure it's going to be specific to your niche and it's going to be traction in that direction. If not, stay away for the viral trends and follow trains. That's my recommendation. Yeah, I think that's such an important kind of delineation is um, like using trends or virality to build your personal brand, you know, like heaven forbid, you know, knock on wood, legendary marketer disappears tomorrow your brand is Eric Forner, you know? And so you can take another offer that you believe in that you've um, like, if it's another course or if it's some other product that you can vouch for that you put your name behind that holds weight with your audience because they know, like, and trust you. Right. And it's not built all on the merits of someone else's program, even though you're promoting it, you know? you could easily take some other offer or um, some other product and insert that in there. And because people have this relationship with you and this trust with you, then your business is still intact and it's not going to fall apart because the business whose product you're promoting disappears or goes out of business or whatever the case is, you know? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Real quick to my viewers, I'm going to just reach back real quick. Everybody that's in my live right now on TikTok, there's quite a few. Go to my Facebook group and you'll see Barb McGowan a post with me and her in it. Click on that link to get into the, her Facebook group. And that's where the live is at. So Jonathan, I hope you heard that. Everybody heard that. Okay. Continue. So I, see, my, it's, are... going, it's going bing, 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 bing everywhere. Yeah. So these are the rabid fans that I was mentioning. Yeah. These, are, these are your people, you know, mm -hmm. they want to be connected. They want to be where you are. And it 100%. shows obviously. 100%. <clears throat> um, so I want to, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to kind of pivot to, so I think we have a full picture of the story of who Eric is and what you've been, been able to accomplish and kind of what you're thought process has been, um, as you've built your audience. And I think something that's really, that was, um, I don't know, kind of spoke to me was kind of what you were talking about with creating like that paradigm or having that almost like internal conversation. What are the words that this, like that I would use to describe this problem or this pain point and using those same words to describe um, that problem or pain point to your target audience, to your avatar on, t in your content on TikTok, because when people hear that tribal language, they're going to be like, oh, 
these are my people. Like, that's my dude. He knows exactly what I'm going through. He knows my problem, my pain point, because he just said this, or he just referred to that or made this reference, you know? Um, and that paradigm, like that kind of way of thinking about something, um, it's like what you were saying, those long shifts that could apply to someone in construction, or that could apply to a nurse or someone like that. But it's like by using that, that language that they would use to describe their problem. Now they're tuned into what you're saying, because it's obvious that you get it. And I, I just love that. And so I think that's like an actionable thing that anyone watching can take away is use that, you know, tribal language of your target audience of your avatar. Um, like for example, I wouldn't say my avatar is basically me a year ago. So that's somebody who wants to quit their nine to five job. And I would use that terminology. I would say, do you want to quit your nine to five job? Do you want to um, be able to work at home or work wherever you want? I wouldn't say, do you want to fire your boss? Because that's not, that's just not the language that my avatar would have running through their head. They'd be like, man, I want to quit. Fire your boss kind of has this different connotation that might appeal to other target audiences, but just not mine. You know what I mean? So just food for thought for everyone watching. Um, but I do want to pivot to, for again, for everyone who's watching, um, what are some like practical and actionable tips that you would give to someone like a brand new content creator specifically on TikTok? Um, specifically on TikTok, I would, I would find a creator that I like and trust and I would buy from, from the get-go. Like I would like, okay, if I, if that's my mentor, if I signed up under that person, I would try to, you know, get in their Facebook group. I would be involved and no matter what, every day, if, if you're a legendary marketer, if you're in, in Barb, in Barb's group, she does lives every single day. If you're in my group, you, I do lives pretty much every single day, Facebook, all that stuff, get involved from the beginning, right? Ask a lot of questions. And as soon as you start into your business, after you find out, like, you start doing like market research and finding out what your target, you know, your, your avatar is. And you, you find out who you are inside. Like, I guess you ask yourself these questions of like, what would be the first TikTok I would want to see if I was on a journey. Right. So I would say, start out with something basic. Don't promote any products or services out the gate. None at all. At least get a thousand solid followers. Right. And it could be one viral video either way try to use messaging to where it's a, a call to action where they relate with you on one video. And I think it should be really powerful. And if you're in Barb's group, run that video through with her, right? Say, Hey, Barb, can you check out this video? Do you think this is a, a way to tell my story from the get-go to kind of gain traction? And I guess, you know, I know she'll look, look over it. Right. So I would definitely don't overthink things. Don't overcomplicate your videos. Right. And when you're, when you're starting out with TikTok at least do five videos a day, do one stitch, one duet, right? And then you're going to do two, <laughs> two value videos. Like basically if you want to do learn here or more, if, you know, uh, go to this website, these are the three tools that I use for my online business or whatever it is. Um, if you would like to learn more, please click on the link in the bio or please to learn more, not click on the link in the bio, excuse me, that was bad. To learn more, just follow me or, or, you know, follow me on this journey with your very first TikTok. Either way, don't overcomplicate it. When people think I have to do five TikToks a day, it sounds overwhelming. Just throw in some stitches and duets with your creators that you like. Um, and then another thing is go into your creators or your, the, your, uh, the, all of the, the authority figures in your niche, whatever it is, and look at their comments and see how they re react to people and maybe watch how they set up their videos and look at their most viral videos, you know, use that as, as groundwork. Don't overcomplicate TikTok, just be you and tell your story. The, uh, you know, the, uh, the money will come. Don't even focus on that whatsoever because if you're in TikTok, into TikTok for business or whatever, tell your story and I guess you, I promise you people will come. And the funny thing is I'll bring back as avatar, my avatar has changed and transformed over my journey. And so I noticed like, as I get on my TikToks, like last night I signed somebody up, they've been watching me since my, the very first time. I've never really noticed them on my lives, but they always like comment. They're always saying something or give me a thumbs up and then they'll reach out to me for mentorship. 
and like blown away. I'm like, you know, so it got me thinking, you know, just by me messaging and even though they're not communicating back and I'm not getting 5 million messages on my videos, that doesn't mean people aren't watching. Yeah, for sure. I've had like a similar, well, a few similar experiences where it's people who've been watching, they haven't taken action and have been following me since like February. And then now like that I'm doing coaching, they want to partake in that. Um, so yeah, that's such a good like tip that even though, even if people aren't liking your video, even if they're not commenting, people are still seeing your content. And I think the thing that's crazy about the TikTok algorithm specifically is that it's like, you will see the most niche stuff on your for you page. And it's like, this is creepy how accurate this is, you know? Mm -hmm. And so TikTok is very incentivized to keep you on the platform and to keep you watching videos because that's how they make money, you know? Absolutely. And so they're highly incentivized to use their algorithm to keep you engaged and keep you watching. And so they know what kind of people to show your content to. And we don't know fully how that works. TikTok works in mysterious ways, but um, keep creating your content and exactly what you're saying. Like, this is definitely advice that I give the people I coach and to anyone who's watching is let go of the outcome, let go of the money stuff and let go of even, oh, I can't put a link in my bio. Don't worry about the link in your bio. Your first, how, however long it takes you to reach like a thousand followers should just be telling your story, trying to connect with the people in your audience and inviting them to follow on your journey, because those are going to be some of your most rabid fans that are going to help you build your following and going to stay connected with you. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, just like what you said and, and like the, that viral video that you were talking about, like I said, the call to action matched the vibe of the content and it was, Hey, this is your sign. Follow along on my journey, follow along in this journey with me. Like, this is the sign that you're, you know, you're supposed to be seeing this and be, be following me. The, different, the difference between using that call to action and using a call to action of now click the link in my bio and buy this thing would have been such a different outcome. I oh, feel yeah. like, you know, and I feel like probably would have inspired a lot of negative comments that you would have then had to deal with instead of being like, hey, this hit me in the feels and like, dude, it's like you get me, you know? Right. So um, anyway. <clears throat> so I, I want to pivot again. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that a lot of people who are new to affiliate marketing, new to online business, they can struggle with what you kind of alluded to um, the valley of despair. You know, we start off and we're gung ho and like, yeah, we could, I could do this. I could figure this out. I see all these other people on TikTok making videos and talking about this. Mm -hmm. um, and then they start to realize, oh, there, there's actually more to this than meets the eye. I have to set up a sales funnel. I have to create email sequences and, you know, do this, that, and the other thing. And then they start having self-doubt, insecurity, that valley of despair kicks in. Um, and that's where a lot of people quit right before that next step, which is getting through that and getting to success, right. um, was kind of self-doubt and insecurities and all of that, something that you struggled with when you, when you were starting. Like every day, um, I hit, I hit the valley of despair almost every week, but I'm always running into something like I have to overcome some kind of challenge. And, and what it boils down to is me either being lazy or not. It's either I want to get on my computer and research it myself, right. And get through it. And I learned this over the time is like, when I hit those road, roadblocks before, or those values of despair before I would just get stuck and I would just kind of bottom out. And I would just like, kind of sorrow in it and like I had all this information in my head and like all these trainings that I've done and like I, I know exactly what I'm doing but I don't know what to do first all of these things was going were going through my head I didn't have a schedule so yeah all of these things happen not as not as like magnet mag, mag, the magnitude of it now is like not as bad I don't go into these like weird things where like life's over with kind of thing, you know, I'm second guessing my whole existence on this <laughs> earth, you know, but it doesn't get to that point anymore. It's just to a point where like I get struck, I get stuck and I kind of just sit back and I figure it out. I might take a walk now um, or a breather, but either way, yeah, that value of despair is very real. And that's part of entrepreneurship, right? It's not how it's when you fall, it's how you fall forward. 
you don't fall backwards, right? So that's the thing that you got to learn is that if you fall, that's part of learning. That's part of this stuff. It's part of the struggle. When you fall, you just got to dust yourself back up, regroup, and then move forward. And if you need to, during along the way, ask questions, man. That is just ask questions, reach out. Yeah, totally. That's definitely two pieces of advice that are so true and so beneficial. Like if you have a, an issue or a problem, or if you can't figure something out and you've look, you looked on Google, looked on YouTube, and you're still st- stuck, get plugged into a community like mine, like Eric's, like who, whoever's or whatever community, but a, a place where you feel safe and comfortable in asking those questions um, and getting that help from people who've been there and done that. You know, like I always like to say, nobody is born knowing how to make a sales funnel. We all had to learn from scratch doing trial and error. Um, And I'm sorry if you can hear my cat howling in the background. (laughs) I had to kick her out of the room, but, um, but yeah, asking questions, getting plugged into a community and like failing as often as you can. I know that sounds horrifying to most people, but it's like in basketball, you learn a lot less when you beat, beat another team by two points than if you lose by two points, where you're then going to be picking apart everything and figuring out, okay, what broke, what didn't work, what did work, so that the next time you play that team, you're dialed in. When you win, when you're constantly just winning, you tend to gloss over kind of the mechanics of how you got there and how you can improve. Hush. <sighs> Sorry. Because you won, you had this outcome, which is this extrinsic motivating factor that allows you to kind of overlook the fact that, oh, you missed these free throws or you missed that layup or you, you know, fouled out three players or whatever, you know? Right. And so I I love, and, and I think something else I would add to that too, is realizing that failure, like you literally never fail until you quit and you stop trying because that's when your journey has died. If you keep trying new and different things and trying and iterating, um, like there were 10,000 iterations of a light bulb using different filaments before we found a light that works and is like the basis for the lights that we use today. So those many failures along the way are what teach us and what help us get to the end state, which is that light bulb and the illumination moment that we, you know, that is that outcome that we're looking for. Absolutely. Um, 100%. Yeah. I feel so strongly about that. Um, so it's I'm going to ask repetitiveness, you know, the repetitiveness oh, going yes. over and over and just doing it over and over. And that's, it. that's right. it. you know, don't be afraid to, you know, you're not failing, right? It's just not, you're not failing. And I tell people too, this is one question. Last thing is when people in my comments, a lot is like, I'm struggling. I don't, I, you know, I'm, I can't make ends meet. I don't have a job. I'm looking for a job, but I need to do this. And those are the people I would like to help, but those are the people I'd not like to work with because they're looking for fast money. Mm-hmm. But then you got the other individuals that say the agony question, should I quit my job and just do this full time? And I only suggest that if you have a little nest egg saved up to live off of while you get your business off the ground. But I don't suggest to anybody uh, to ever quit your jobs when you first start out. Um, as a beginner, uh, make sure you have some kind of st- stability. It'll make you feel more confident inside as well. Um, not only that, it'll give you good content. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a, yeah, exactly. Something that came up as you were talking about like failures and struggling and stuff was kind of another tip about content creation specifically for TikTok, but well, content creation in general. Um, but it's like, if I put out a video and it gets like, 10 views. It's not, that doesn't mean I suck as a content creator. I suck as a marketer, as a human, I should just pack up and quit. And I think that the ability to detach yourself and your identity and like your value as a human from your content is such Mm -hmm. an important skill. And I say it's a skill because it is something you can, you learn and can improve. But if I put out a video and it gets 10 views, it doesn't mean I should quit. I suck or I'm the worst or anything like that. Um, any of those labels. Um, I don't take it personally. I'm like, okay, what about this? This is such a great learning experience. Like what about this video was, was, didn't hook people. Didn't want, didn't get them to want to watch more. 
because I can take that and file it away. Like, okay, never do that again. And not only help my content, but give that to the people I coach, give that to the people in my Facebook group, you know, and let them know, Hey guys, this is something really important that I learned. And this is how I learned it. And this is kind of what the takeaway is or the best practice so that you don't have to make that same mistake and have put a video out and then it gets, you know, five views or whatever. <clears throat> but again, going back to like the coaching analogy, it's like when I used to coach basketball, if I'm like telling a player, you know, during the middle of the game, Hey, you need to, um, I don't know, get your elbow up more when you're shooting because you're shooting from down here. And that's why you keep getting blocked that if that player is like, Oh, coach hates me. I suck. I'm stupid. I shouldn't even try this game is dumb. Anyway. I like that mentality, then we're going to lose. Like that player is going to be mentally out of it. I might as well just take them out, you know, and that's going to have an impact on the outcome of the game. Like maybe we'll lose, which would be, you know, unfortunate, but if that player's like, okay, so she's saying that I need to put my arm here and really think of it as like a behavioral change rather than you're the worst person. I'm yelling at you. You're, you know, you're bad and stupid, but thinking of it as, okay, I need to put my elbow here. And that way we're going to have this different outcome, which is I'm going to shoot it and not get blocked. The same is true for content creation. Use that feedback from your market. Like if your views are low, if your engagement is low, whatever your analytics are telling you, that's feedback from your coach, you know, the people in your market. And you can use that feedback to make tweaks, like go into your analytics. And if it says, oh yeah, in this 30 second video, people only watch 15 seconds. So look at what that 15 seconds had and see where that dropping off is happening and make changes, put, make that video again and put it out again, make it shorter, change the hook, change the way you tell the story. But the point is, <coughs> excuse me, try new things and iterate, you know, don't just keep putting out the same thing without looking at why they, the certain content works and certain content does not work. You know, don't just blindly be throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks, you know, like that's definitely a good starting place, but you need to change and iterate and try new things and constantly be testing. Um, I got something added to that real quick. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say like, I want a video go, to go viral and uh, I want a lot of followers. Well, you got to think about those people. Those followers are actual people, right? And so this will help with your mindset and then like connecting with your avatar as well. Mm -hmm. No, re realizing if you close your eyes and thought about it, right? The people that are at the un other end of that phone, that's like engaging with your content. That's an actual human being that has feelings that's probably struggling or maybe struggling or would like to learn. It doesn't matter what it is, right? <laughs> So if we could think about those each individual on 70,000 people as not followers, but just actual like individuals that that have characters and that their, their characters are like ours, we just have to find the dynamics like of how we operate. We already know how we work and how we think. Just replace that reverse engineer our thought patterns and our thought processes and put it into a video. Yeah, that's actually super practical and helpful. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's see. I think we have time for the last two questions that I want to ask you. Cause I think this is juicy stuff. Um, so your lives on TikTok are pretty, I don't want to say famous, but they're juicy. Like you bust out the whiteboard and you are like over here, educating people, like tell, tell people who are watching what your strategy is on going live on TikTok and what you're trying to accomplish when you do that. All right, for sure. Um, so my whole, my whole strategy behind going live on TikTok is seven hours of content. That's the basic thing of what it's based around. Now, reason why is because if a person engages with your content initially, they're not really, they're not even a warm lead yet. They're just kind of cold. They click on your stuff and give you a follow because, you know, it crossed their mind about maybe changing their lives or making money, whatever. Well, what happens is they click on your content. And at that point, um, everything kind of like, I don't know, it just, where's I going with that? I, I just got, I just got bring like your strategy with live. So oh, yeah, strategy. Like okay. So strategy with lives is 
try to build. I'm not really good at ad copy and writing emails and stuff like that. And so I wanted to get engaged with my audience as easy and as fast as I possibly could on a large scale, right? And if I did that and educated people, people would see me as an authority figure and, pe- and somebody that's transparent and all that stuff. So I combined five videos a day, two or one stitch, one duet, and then the three, you know, two value or whatever, one funny or whatever personal um, in regards to your niche, obviously. And then I would go live as soon as I got my thousand followers. I committed uh, to 30 days every day. So like tonight when I get on, it's going to be, I'm going live for the next 30 days. It's been like nine days already. So I just commit to 30 days every day that I'm going to go live. I'm going to help as many people as I possibly can and, and give value because honestly, you can tell people everything the business inside and out as much as you want if if they're not like taking word for word notes and like fully engaged with what you're going on they're going to ask you for your help or they're going to click on your link but they're going to engage with you and so i wanted to engage with my followers as much as possible for that seven hour piece so the more you engage with your audience and they connect and relate with you like-minded individuals i found that the power is in truth is lives 100 percent And so for a new person that's just getting out, that would help you break the ice, um, I guess, as far as going live on on, on Zoom calls with 10, 15 people and you're like engaging. So if you're just live and nobody can talk back um, and you can just do your thing as you're working legitimately, like right now I got four, five, seven, five followers, like just watching my live. Um, It was up to quite a bit. But either way, as I'm doing this, I'm not paying attention to what's going on. People are seeing how I'm engaging with Barb and her audience and my audience. They see me as an authority figure. I'm actually trying. So I'm getting engagement. I'm even getting questions. What are you guys doing? What's going on? Where can I see that at? All these things are building my algorithm up, right? Just by them being curious and me not even answering, you know, every five seconds is building curiosity. People are commenting and people or whatever is building the algorithm up. So utilize lives as much as possible if on one platform or another and if you're bad at ad copy which i don't say don't do it learn it but for the most part if you're trying to get your content in front of people go live as much as possible yeah i 100 percent agree i would add to that <clears throat> excuse me just based on my own experience when i was first starting um on tiktok after i had gotten to a thousand followers um going live there are people who are curious about what you're doing. And maybe those aren't the ones commenting and liking. Maybe they are. Maybe they're the ones in your DMs and maybe they're not. <clears throat> but those people, when you go live, it's a completely different um, kind of dynamic than having like a TikTok video where you have 15 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute, whatever. And you kind of know what you're going to say and you have a specific, I don't want to say script, but you have something specific you want to say. And so you just say it to the camera, you know, um, when you have people able to watch you live, you get so much more, you know, nonverbal stuff from them and you really can figure out what their deal is. And if you trust them and speaking for myself, I know that the first, some of the first commissions that I got when I was first starting on TikTok were, from the people who would join me on my lives, you know? And so, and for those who are wondering, you know, what do I talk about on my lives? Like what Eric was saying, provide value, educate. If you don't know what that even really looks like, or if you don't feel confident in that, talk about your journey, like talk about kind of document your process as you're going along and, um, you know, solicit questions from the audience. I've met, I've met people who've joined me on lives that I'm still friends with that I, you know, it's been, I don't know, eight months since I met them through a live, Mm -hmm. but now we connected outside of TikTok and we're friends. So the power of going live is so much more than just kind of boosting your follower count or boosting a video, which is, you know, obviously a thing that is helpful too, but it really does give you that human connection and allow you to show who you are, your authentic self to your audience in a um, kind of more vulnerable way because you're live and it's not, you can't start and stop and edit and delete and stuff like that. Like you can with video. Absolutely. I was going to add to that. Like when you go live as well, your videos that the content that you build during the day, like your five videos will become easier, mm-hmm. right? Cause it could be basically just almost every video in a sense go to my live, go to my live, go to my live, go to my live, or go to my Facebook group, go to my Facebook group, go to my Facebook group. And your content can be based 
like literally two videos a day, three videos a day could be based on go to my Facebook group or go to my live tonight. So you can actually hear the real story and actually learn on my whiteboard. Um, you know, right. So you can connect. So yeah, you're right. It's not about really building the, I guess it is built building the followers in the, in the, in the algorithm and boosting your video and your live up and also your videos that you put out, but you're able to go live and people can see the, who you are in transparency. Right. And if you engage on every comment, that makes it so much more powerful. Like literally go down, do a roll call on all the people mm -hmm. that are in there and engage on each person. Ask what they do for work. How you doing and roll down. Don't miss a comment ever. Right. And when you do that, you'll build a following to where every time you have, they're waiting for your life, you have like a following of 10 people guaranteed. And they just, and they'll boost your stuff all night. Like they just sit there and watch eating popcorn because it's so entertaining. Right. Yeah. Seriously. And so you know, they'll comment and boost in and everything is going great. And they're talking new people into signing up for your stuff and they're not even part of your stuff, but you just <laughs> want to see you do good. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy how people just, you, you actually can connect with people without yeah. even talking to them. For sure. I know I once had a, I was on a TikTok live, like doing a live <clears throat> and there was someone who's like, uh, if I don't respond or he said something, but he's like, um, I just am listening because I want to hear what you have to say, but I'm actually wandering around at Home Depot right now. So it's that's like, awesome. Yeah. Right. That's awesome. Um, so I want to just briefly pause. <laughs> um, we still have um, some time, but I want to solicit questions that you have if you're on Facebook watching this right now, type in the live chat, what questions you have for Eric. And while you guys are thinking of that and typing those in the chat, I want to ask you one last question and then we can um, see what questions people have that they come up with in the chat. Most definitely. So, the question that I would want to ask is if you were, like if your TikTok accounts all got shut down or um, you know, you, your Facebook group exploded and is gone. If you were restarting your business today, um, from scratch, you know, nobody knew who you were, you know, nobody knew who your, your name, um, but you still have all the same knowledge and skills that you have today. How would your journey be different? Like, what would you do differently, uh, knowing what you know now? I think it would be different. Okay, I thought I think I'd be different in the simple fact that I would know that it's okay to fail. Mm -hmm. I would I would know that I'm going to fail and that I'm going to hit roadblocks, but then I also know that it's abundant. I also know that I'm manifesting, it's already there. Right. The only thing I have to do is put in the work and just get it. Um, I would I would literally wake up each day. I would probably do affirmations. Um, I would do millionaire mindset, uh, mental re like uh, subconscious free programming at night when you sleep. It's eight hours. I do that. I haven't missed a day in a long time, but it's eight hours long, and I can leave the link in the in the description or whatever in the comments. But I listen to this. It's on my not my it's on my YouTube channel. It's uh, somebody else's, but I listen to it nightly. Um, I would definitely start with um, rich dad, poor dad, getting that mindset, and maybe journey into maybe happy pocket full of money. Mm -hmm. as another book and then um and i don't i didn't read them i got them on audio and i could listen to them more than once so i i I, just, I hear more things each time that i didn't hear before um but i would definitely get my mindset right i would i would think of this as not a job and then i would, I would not look at the money but look at this as your future mm -hmm. right that you have five years to get this thing together right if you have a job if you can do like get it together to where you're done retired like 100 percent like signing checks now right that's my goal is in five years i'm going to just be signing checks and so that's right and so but if you keep that in mind it's just not going to come easy and you're going to you have to put in work and know that from the beginning then this business is for you for sure and if and gravitate to one person or like a mentor or a coach um or or something that you can actually have a community with because mm -hmm. you know the knowledge i have now if i didn't have a community i would jump into the community and i would like lock arms with people and ask questions and stay consistent. Yeah, I love all of that. And I, I always think it's funny how we do calls like this or do interviews and stuff and really are looking for like talking about practical stuff, like how to create good content on TikTok and how to build a following and that kind of a thing. And it always ends up circling back to mindset, you know, <clears throat> but I totally agree. Like, I feel like just to add on to what you were saying that 
the, the things that I was doing right before, like leading up to me, discovering affiliate marketing, discovering kind of the world of online business and taking that plunge. I was listening to audiobooks relentlessly. Like I would go for a walk or a run, or I would just be around the house or I'd be at work or driving to and from my job, you know, and just constantly inundating my mind with positivity, success, growth, like all of the things that I feel really prepped me to be in that mental place that was ideal to decide to become an entrepreneur. You know, I feel like if I hadn't been doing all that stuff, it's almost like I like psychically felt that, that like, I knew that I was going to discover something that was going to be like a life-changing experience or opportunity for me. And I needed to get my mind right first so that I could actually really reap the benefits. <clears throat> and I feel like exactly what you said about having that long-term vision for your business and realizing it's not about the quick money. It's about building something that's meaningful over time. And that was my mindset when I, you know, coming into this was my goal was to quit my nine to five within a year. So that was the goal I had set for myself, but I knew it was going to take time. It was not going to happen overnight. And I kind of, I, some, a piece of advice that I heard that was so helpful to me is it's like, it's a saying in AA, like just do the next right thing, you know, mm -hmm. like whatever the next step is, whatever the next thing you're supposed to do, the next thing that someone suggests to you that knows more than you do and has been there and done that and had the success and achieved the things you want to achieve, do that thing that they're suggesting, even if it feels uncomfortable or scary because they know what the heck they're talking about. And so, but doing, <clears throat> doing the next right thing and releasing that outcome again, kind of like serenity prayer, right? Um, realizing you can control certain things about your business. You can control the quality of the content you put out. You can control how much time you spend writing your email sequence or, you know, that kind of a thing you can't control. If you get sales, you can't control if people like your video or send you a DM or anything like that. Right. So really focusing on building that long-term <clears throat> foundation, building those relationships with people, and then letting go of those outcomes because we can't control them anyway. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, it's, it's inevitable. You know, you put the work in, you're going to get good out. And, you know, it's, and you, if you wonder where you're going to be at in five years, just look at your friends, mm -hmm. um, your influences in your life, you know, their mindset, if that's what you're around, you know, it's a, it's a big thing. I don't know why I keep coming back to mindset, but yeah. if you were, if you're going in a different direction, as far as being a beginner and starting a, a business from the beginning, um, I would definitely find a, a definitely a, an affiliate program of some sort. Cause that's like the ground level for anything. It's a good mm -hmm. foundation for people. Um, it's, it has already an established business model and I would find a product that I liked and enjoyed to promote and I would learn the business and I would grow from there and I would flourish and I would stumble along the way, but I would stumble for, for, forward. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right. Um, so we have some questions, Barb, what is your TikTok name? Just Barb McGowan, nothing fancy. Um, Jessica asks, is it best to draft a bunch of videos before you start putting content out on TikTok? If you're struggling with that, like I am, I'm definitely struggling with self-confidence and for some reason scared to put that first video out. So the very first video, don't worry about it, right? um that very very that very first video it doesn't have to have a selling point to it it just has to have a story it has to have your story so if you're not if you're not comfortable looking directly at the camera look off to the side or like pretend that there's a person there on the side of you like you can literally have a video and a conversation with yourself and not really the, the video is playing so just imagine the video or the camera is not even there yeah um i know i was super scared of creating my first TikTok video. I was afraid that people were going to heckle me, that I was going to look stupid. Nobody was going to care what I had to say and, you know, all that normal stuff and that they were going to tell me about it. You know, they were going to be in my comments, like, who cares? We don't care about what you have to say. This is stupid. You're stupid. I hope you fail. You will fail, you know, all that stuff. Um, but I was like, I know that I need to create content and I need to be on, I need to create content on TikTok and tell my story. <coughs> and document my journey because all the people that know way more than me are telling me to do this. So again, right. going back to taking that suggestion, but so I was like, I know I need to do this. So it's kind of like ripping out, ripping off a bandaid, or at least it was for me. And so I, 
I had kind of like on my, my laptop, I had kind of like an outline that I wanted to say. And then I just started recording and I must've recorded the video 10 times because I wasn't happy with it. But I mean, from a tech, like, and then I was like, okay, this is good enough. And then I posted it and the feeling of like hitting post and knowing like, okay, I've done my part. And now I just have to wait and see what happens. Cause really that's all it is a series of that. That's it. But, um, the feeling of accomplishment and pride and being like, wow, I, I felt afraid. And then I did it anyway, was so empowering. Um, and it's so funny because looking back, that first video was garbage. Mm -hmm. I didn't have captions. I didn't have a trending sound. I mean, not that that makes or breaks a video, but there were so many tech aspects that just weren't that great. Um, but it still got views. It still led to people following along to see what all this business was about, you know? And what I found was each subsequent video after that got easier and easier and easier. And it wasn't because posting videos on TikTok objectively got easier. It's because I got better. Right. I became a better, more confident, more like stronger version of myself. And that's the beauty of doing stuff when you're scared is that the fear will go away, not because it becomes less scary objectively, because we become more savage, basically. Right. So at one point, did at one, what point did it become fun for you? Because it, it does become fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was pretty quick. I would say maybe within a few weeks or a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where it felt more like okay, what do I get to make content about today? Right. <clears throat> and not like terror and, you know, being frozen with fear and stuff. Um, but yeah, the, you'll become desensitized to it. And not only that, the more content you create, the faster you create it. If you're putting out five or, you know, 10, even let's say, not that I recommend doing that because you'll probably get burnt out. But if you're putting out five videos a day, you'll you'll get videos with low views or you'll get videos that don't do well or whatever, but you get to learn faster what works and what doesn't. And not only that, you get to figure out your unique point of view and your uni unique voice faster. And the faster you discover that stuff, the, not only will your content get better, it'll get easier and you'll have more success. So 100%. I would just say, like feel a feel the fear feel whatever embrace negative it. feelings that come up yeah embrace it right embrace not, it and, yeah, and it even is. talk about it like be like i'm really nervous you guys because i you know fill in the blank i'm afraid of looking stupid but you know what i'm doing it anyway so if you feel like you want to do something in your life but you're afraid of looking stupid follow along on my journey because i'm doing it you know turn it into turn your mess into your message like that's something that I heard, I think from legendary marketer at some point, but turn your mess into your message, like make everything like a, a teachable moment that you can help use to help somebody who's on the other side of your video. That's watching right. your content, you know, Yeah, and take that word can't and replace it with can and mm -hmm. do positive affirmation. I'm telling you, like, if you tell yourself over and over, like, I can't, I hate sweeping. I hate sweeping. I hate sweeping. I hate doing dishes. I hate doing dishes. You're going to repeatedly tell yourself subconsciously you hate doing dishes and you will, you will to the bone, to the core, hate doing dishes. But if you tell yourself every day, I can do a video, I can do a video. It will be a good video. I, I am comfortable. I am comfortable. And as you're doing, I am comfortable. And you can get in your music and you get in your groove and you can get into your, your, you know, you can start your feeling your vibe kind of thing. It, I'm telling you, you know, just tell yourself you can do it. And no matter what it is in life, you know, coming from me, you can do it. It yeah. can be done. All right, y'all. Um, before Eric leaves for the night to go do some more live stuff. on Yeah, TikTok, another hour. I got another live. You're insatiable. Does anybody <laughs> have any last minute questions? Looks like silence. Uh, yeah, Eric, to... you're a beast. Thank, uh, thank you. you. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, and you're going to be my group coming here probably in the near future. So, yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I appreciate coming mm -hmm. on and engaging with your audience and hopefully they got value and some gold nuggets out of it. You know, I didn't want to, we didn't want to make it too technical into the, 
into the rabbit hole of things, um, right? Um, so we just kind of left it basic on like the new beginner kind of thing and your journey and my journey and how it kind of goes. And so for anybody out there that's thinking about starting an online business and Barb is your woman, I'm telling you right now, if you're in her Facebook group, she's going to keep you strong. She's going to keep you alive. She's going to keep you rolling. Um, just stay consistent, right? If you're in my Facebook group or if you're in my Facebook group and you gravitate more towards Barb, run with her. I don't care. Same vice versa. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. I just want people to be abundant. I want people to make money. And I want to have good testimonials. You know I mean, that's what it's about. I want a ton of good testimonials. And what that means is you make money. That's what it boils down to. You changing your life and, and more time and freedom and money. That's what it boils down to. If I go to sleep at night when I lay my head and feel comfortable that I educated somebody enough or I over delivered, mm -hmm. I can sleep easy at night. Yeah. Agreed. All right. On that note, thank you everybody for joining. Um, if you are watching this as a replay feel free to drop a hashtag replay um we'll have eric drop the link for his group into the chat so you guys can join him over there and thanks for joining we'll see you guys later all right thank you bye y'all peace